gonna talk about uh, how the open telemetry operator could help in you out instrumenting uh, a Node.js app. Uh, a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Yuri. Uh, I'm a Brazilian guy based in Germany. <laughs> uh, currently, I'm a software engineer at Red Hat, uh, part of the operator enablement team. I'm also a contributor of the Open Telemetry project, more specifically uh, for the Open Telemetry operator. For that reason, uh, I bring, uh, I'm trying to bring you a uh, real interested uh, tool that the Open Telemetry operator will be capable to help you on the application lifecycle. Uh, my first question is: uh, Who is familiar with uh, the Open Telemetry on the audience? Oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> okay, uh, I don't know uh, if you, uh, uh, if anybody knows uh, what the open telemetry is. Uh, basically, uh, this is the uh, cool definition about the open telemetry on the project. Open telemetry is a collection of tools, APIs, and SDKs. But I used to say the open telemetry is. Uh, the middle uh, of your application lifecycle because uh, basically you can uh, collect data from anywhere and send those data processed in the, your target format to anywhere, okay? And then uh, don't be afraid with this cool uh, definition uh, because basically the open telemetry stays on the same, uh, on the middle of your uh, application lifecycle. Uh, Chigran uh, has defined uh, and helped uh, to yeah to create this OTLP uh, format, uh, which basically is the Open Telemetry Protocol, and the specification you can see uh, on that slide that helps uh, the developers or uh, yeah the SRE teams uh, to send the data in the specific format and to help the open telemetry to understand those data and to send uh, 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 these traces, logs, or, or spans uh, properly. Uh, as I told, uh, the open telemetry is uh, in the middle. Uh, we have one part of this, uh, the hotel. It's the open telemetry, it's the abstraction for open telemetry. The hotel collector. The hotel collector uh, is in the middle that receive uh, data from uh, your microservices uh, spread in your Kubernetes cluster, or uh, you can have uh, L7 proxy or layer serving proxy, uh, which will, which the data will pass through and send to uh, the open telemetry, or uh, also it's possible uh, to collect data from the main cloud vendors like Azure AWS or Google Cloud. And once you have uh, those data uh, in the open telemetry, you can process uh, the data and change the format from, uh, I don't know, JSON uh, to the OTLP or OTLP to JSON or OTLP uh, to the Prometheus. Uh, you, you can process the data in order uh, to send uh, the data uh, uh, formatted for your target application. And then on the right side, uh, you have the trace databases. Uh, anybody is familiar with the Zipkin or Jaeger? And then basically you can uh, convert the data. Actually, uh, Prometheus understand, but sorry, uh, Jaeger understand the, the, the OTLP, but you can uh, send to Zipkin or, or Jaeger and or I don't know any, uh, different uh, uh, tool that we will analyze uh, the information that you send from uh, the open telemetry. So, uh, and then you can ask me, how can you configure your uh, open telemetry instance? Uh, it's basically a config map in Kubernetes or a config section when you are uh, deploy your uh, custom resource, the collector resource. Then you have uh, these uh, four sections, uh, receivers, processors, exporters, and servicey. And then the receivers, you can configure multiple receivers that will send uh, the data uh, to the open telemetry. Processors, again, will change those data. Exporter will export to your destination. And then uh, you can 
just organized uh, on the yeah, uh, on the service section, uh, which are logs, which are traces, and which are metrics. And then just to give you uh, yeah examples uh, of well known receivers like FluentT, Kafka, or OTLP, Zipkin also could be uh, a receiver and an exporter. And uh, processor, uh, you have a kind of batch metrics, resource attributes. You can uh, change uh, one of them, uh, the information that you get uh, from your uh, source application. And yeah, well, no, also exporters. Uh, you have the OTLP that is based in, in the gRPC, uh, but you have also the OTLP communicating using uh, HTTP instead. Uh, and yeah, the, the last one, like Prometheus and Zipkin, you could also send the data. But you can ask me, okay, Yuri, uh, I didn't find uh, any kind of uh, receiver or exporter uh, that will attend my application because, I don't know, I have one specific tool uh, in my company uh, that is a third part or was created by me. And then you can uh, uh, check uh, this uh, repo. This is the open telemetry collector contrib. Uh, let me just go there, here. We have a lot of different receivers. As you can see here, we have a patch receiver. We have the <coughs> sorry, we have the Elasticsearch uh, receiver and InfluxDB, uh, for example. And if you go back, for example, uh, for the uh, 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 receive uh, exporter list, you have. Uh, the file exporter, you have also the InfluxDB, Locky, uh, in the case of Grafana, and F5 Cloud. You have many uh, different exporter or uh, receiver and processors also. And uh, if you want to contribute creating your own uh, receiver or uh, uh, processor or exporter, please. Uh, just raise a PR or yeah, ask me, I will be there, how to raise your first PR contributing with the Open Telemetry project. So, and you can ask me, okay, Yuri, and why uh, you are talking about the Open Telemetry operator? Uh, once the Open Telemetry can install uh, a standalone instance in your uh, Linux machine or your Kubernetes, and for these two reasons, because when you, uh, this is indeed, when you uh, install an open telemetry operator, you are managing automatically one collector. And for the second reason, uh, we created recently a possibility to auto-instrument uh, using yeah, the annotations feature uh, to auto-instrument some of applications based on Python. Java or Node.js. Uh, besides that, uh, you have uh, the possibility not to only auto instrument using uh, the the operator, the the Open Telemetry operator, but you can also uh, create a manual instrumentation for your applications. And this is the compatibility, uh, like C++, Go. .NET, you can uh, use all of them. We have native libraries for them, and your uh, developers, uh, sorry, <coughs> your developers will be able uh, to create uh, the OTLP uh, format to, yeah, to give uh, to the open telemetry, to, to telemetry data to the OTL instance. Um, okay, and what is the requirement uh, to deploy uh, the open telemetry operator and uh, the auto instrumentation for your Node.js application? First of all, uh, when you have the operator installed, you have to create a resource, a custom resource called open telemetry collector. That it will be the instance uh, which will collect and export the data. And we have different modes, uh, like deployment or sidecar, 
in that case that you want to auto instrument your application, then we should set the mode as a sidecar. The second one, uh, we have created a new uh, custom resource called instrumentation. And then you have to create a new one. And the annotations also that, we'll, uh, that I will present on the next slides. Uh, we have these uh, four annotations that are mandatory to deploy your auto instrumentation. If you are deploying uh, for Java, you have to include this inject dash Java equals true, Node.js, Python, and so on and so forth. And this injection uh, equals true that will uh, enable the collector to inject a sidecar container in your deployment. So uh, this is uh, a code snippet about the instrumentation customer uh, custom resource. Uh, you have on the spec section like the exporter propagators and sample in simpler, sorry. And it, the, the endpoint basically you have uh, to put the address uh, which is the, the address of your uh, collector. Because uh, this uh, open telemetry uh, can be in another Kubernetes cluster, not in the same. And the propagators also, you have this, uh, uh, this different propagators that is uh, basically the header format defined by the W3C or the B3. You, you could uh, define different formats, different header formats uh, for your data. And uh, how the spans will be collected, you can define on the type uh, of the simpler, simpler section. Uh, basically, this is that was uh, overview uh, about the yeah the open the open telemetry or what open telemetry is. Uh, I I will bring a, a demo uh, just to demonstrate you. Uh, the open telemetry in action, and uh, I have here a Node.js, a basic example of Node.js, I just reload uh, Node.js and Jaeger to demonstrate all the traces the open telemetry collect for the sample uh, uh, application and uh, sent to, to the Jaeger tool. Here, I have on the namespace called uh, dash in apps when my deployment with sidecar okay and on that I will uh, check that on YAML format I have these three annotations I have uh, the first one as I uh, told you uh, the container names, it will be possible also because if your application uh, has more than one uh, container inside uh, the same pod, you can define uh, for the open telemetry which uh, containers will be uh, uh, instrumented. And then in that case, uh, I decided to instrument both containers. And uh, the inject node.js is true. Uh, because uh, I'm trying to auto instrument a Node.js application, and uh, the sidecar will be injected by the by the open telemetry. Okay. And besides that, uh, I will demonstrate you the the, uh, the open telemetry here. Just a second. Sorry is on the app. Yeah, I have created that and I will show you. For example, in my case, I decided to uh, define receivers uh, as a OTLP and uh, the Jaeger. And I put both, uh, both receivers, OTLP and Jaeger, on the service section uh, called here Jaeger to send uh, traces and the receiver uh, to get traces uh, from the OTLP. Okay? It's pretty straightforward uh, because you have just to inform uh, and define and inform to the open telemetry. Okay, you are getting data 
from the OHLP, and you are sending data to the Jaeger. Uh, I've also deployed uh, an Jaeger uh, here. Let me try to yeah, send some data here. Just open the port and do a curl. So two or three, it's not, it's not too much, just to generate data. And here on the Jaeger UI, if I, for example, try to the last hour, try to find the, the traces, uh, you can see here all the operations that uh, were called by the my app application. And then we have the DNS lookup, get slash, because I just uh, did a curl with the slash, because it's a just very low word application. And if you see, for example, here on the get, find traces, you can enter on the traces and get, for example, process. And Jaeger just demonstrate you, OK, and this uh, trace came from and the my app and the my deployment with sidecar deployment uh, deployment name and the telemetry. Uh, this is a Node.js application. The process ID was the 25, and and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, you can enter in a different also HTTPS get sorry uh, middle query like that. And then you see, then you're gonna see the process also. And then it's a, it's really helpful because imagine that you have a situation in your development team that that your application has no, uh, your develop uh, developers has no visibility uh, uh, over your application. Then uh, if you use uh, the open telemetry with the auto instrumentation for different uh, languages like Python, Java, or, or Node.js, you don't need to write any uh, kind of line of code uh, to instrument or to get this overview about your uh, application. And then it's, in my point of view, it's really helpful uh, to at least debug uh, your web application. Uh, besides that, um, besides that, uh, the takeaways of this uh, pretty straightforward talk is again, if you have no visibility uh, over your application, please uh, using use Open Telemetry because it will help uh, to see what is the the current status. If uh, yeah, you have. Uh, in kind of method or call that is uh, getting stuck, uh, yeah, in your database or somehow communicating with another microservices, you're gonna see this visibility. Uh, the auto instrument also will help the yeah the development the development team uh, to to leverage uh, the quality of data and prove and in, or improve uh, the application somehow. And as I uh, mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, uh, if you can see any receiver or exporter, or if you are facing uh, any kind of problem, then I encourage you yeah, to start uh, contributing with this amazing project. Uh, sorry to be biased, uh, because uh, it will yeah, help uh, as, as a software engineers or the SRA team uh, to improve our applications. Thank you. <laughs>